Hi guys, Mark here again, and today we're going to be solving the Day 12 challenge in the Advent of Code series. And today's challenge is all about helping the elves to add up the values of a large order that's stored as a JSON document. And basically this is a deeply nested JSON document, but all you've got to do is add up all the numeric values in the document. And probably like many people, when I saw this problem, I thought, hang on a minute, we can solve this without parsing the JSON document. We could solve this just with a regular expression. So let's have a quick look at some C sharp code where I tried that. So we read all of the text out of our input file. We then just look for any numbers. I suppose I should really have checked that those numbers weren't inside strings, but the puzzle input doesn't give us any number inside a string. It could also be a negative number. Then because of the way that regex.match returns things, we need to cast this into a match object, select the value of the match, which will be the string of the number, parse it into an integer with another select, and then sum it together. And that works really nicely. And I was starting to think maybe this will be one of the days where I can solve the problem in under 10 minutes and get on the leaderboard. Well, actually, I can't get on the leaderboard because I don't even start these problems until about two and a half hours after they come out. So the leaderboard is already filled up. But it would be nice to be able to solve the problem quickly. However, when we looked at part two of the problem, now we're told we don't count any objects in the JSON file that have a property of value red. Now, I guess maybe there's a super clever regular expression solution to this, but at this point I realized we are going to have to parse the JSON text into a JSON object and then recursively look through. So how can we do that? Well, let's go back to our C sharp code. In C sharp and .NET generally, the premier JSON library is called newtonsoft.json. You can add it as a NuGet package. I'm sure if you've done any JSON in .NET, you've probably already used this. And it's got an object type called a J object. And so I can say J object.parse and parse the input string into a J object. And then I have created a recursive sum tokens function. So let's have a look at this. Now there are th three things that our token might be. And in newtonsoft.json, it's called a J token. So it might be a J object and the top level thing will be a J object. It might be a J array or it might be a J value. If it's a J object, we need to first of all check if it's a red object because we're not supposed to be counting it. And I'll show you that extension method that I've made in a moment. If it isn't red, then we look at all its properties, which are J property objects, select their value, which might be another J object, J array or J value. And we sum together the value by recursively calling this function on each of those property values. So that's the most complicated one. If it's a J array, uh, the instruction said J arrays can't be read. So we just simply sum through all of the tokens in the J array, again, recursively calling ourselves. And finally, if it's a J value, then we need to see if it's a long, it might be a string, but if it's a long, then we cast its value to a long and otherwise we just return zero. And in fact, this was something that caught me out. I was expecting them to be ints, but they're, but they're longs in newtonsoft.json. And if I get something else, I'll just throw an exception. So let's have a look at my extension method. Well, the isRed method takes a J object, looks at its properties, selects the value of each property, which will be a J value object. If the type of the value is a string, then see if it's red. So if there's any property with a string value of red, then this object is red and we're not counting it. So that was my part B C sharp solution that I eventually got to. It did take me a while, mainly because of tripping over the quirks of newtonsoft.json. And so of course the next piece of the puzzle is to see if I can solve this in F sharp. 
But what I decided to do, rather than just port my C sharp code directly to F sharp, which I, I could have done, I decided I would go and see what I could learn from the way other people are solving this. Now, maybe you think this is cheating, and certainly I wouldn't like to look at the solutions until I got my two gold stars for the day, which I'd done. But actually, one of the whole purposes of doing a challenge like this is to learn and improve your skills. So I think it's a great idea to look at the way people have solved it, particularly in other languages, but also in the same language as yours, to pick up new ideas. And there's just two solutions I want to call out on here. The first of them, let's see if I can find it, the first of them is this C sharp solution from someone called Recursive. And it is a recursive solution. It's almost the same as what I did, but the clever thing here is that Recursive used the dynamic type. And so this allowed them to have three functions, one that takes a J object, one that takes a J array, and one that takes a J value. And then just allow the C-sharp compiler or the dynamic dispatcher to work out which of these three methods should be called. And so that's a fantastic way of getting a little bit more of a dynamic approach from the C-sharp library. And I really like this solution. Another thing I like is that Recursive has passed in an optional avoid parameter to say avoid red objects or don't avoid them. And that allows the same code to solve both problems. Uh, the other solution that I was going to quickly show you was this Python solution. As usual, Python seems to be able to solve a lot of these problems much more um, succinctly than C sharp. And so I thought this was a nice succinct solution for the problem. So let's take some of those ideas on board and head over to F sharp and see how I created an F sharp solution for this. So the first part of the F sharp solution is going to be pretty much the same. I'm going to read my input and parse it to a Newtonsoft JSON object. And I'm going to borrow that idea that we just saw of having a avoid function. And so this method, this function should avoid, basically decides if we should avoid this J object. And it's basically looking for all the properties. Is there one whose value is equal to the avoid value? And it's a little bit cumbersome working with these J objects in F sharp, but I found this operator which tests if an object is of a particular type and allows you to assign it to a variable. So matching the property value with colon question mark J value says this will match if the property is a J value and then it will create a label called JV which has that property as a J value. And then here's my recursive function. I'm able to use this pattern matching syntax on type again. If it's a J object, then if I should avoid it, return zero. Otherwise, go through each of the properties, get the value of the property, map it again to a recursive call to ourself, and then sum it together. If it's a J array, cast it to J token, map it all up, and then sum it. And if it's a J value, then if the type of the token is an integer, then cast the value. And here's how we do a cast in F sharp, this colon question mark greater than symbol, cast it to an int 64, otherwise return zero. And fail with is how you throw exceptions in F sharp. So if I got something else, I will print something out to my console. And so I'm fairly pleased with this. This is one of the more succinct F sharp programs I've managed to write. And I've also taught myself a few new bits of F sharp syntax with these matching on types and casting operators. And as I said, that's the whole purpose of trying to solve these in a new language. You get familiar with more and more bits of the syntax. Anyway, as usual, let me know in the comments if you think there are even more improvements that could be made. I'm sure there are plenty and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.